These babies don't know it yet, but they can expect to live between 18 months and three years longer than if they'd been born even 10 years ago. Behind this march of progress are the great research centers like the Wright Fleming Institute, named after that genius of our own time, the man who discovered penicillin, Sir Alexander Fleming. Yet, for all the victories of the past, more medical battles remain to be fought against the major diseases still troubling mankind, against those little perils, the viruses, which face students like these with one of the greatest challenges of the 60s. As new research teams form up, so must there be new buildings to house them. New centres for medical study, like this one at Hammersmith, London, opened by Mr. Harold Macmillan. There are now an ever-increasing number of doctors coming from the Commonwealth and from every part of the world to work at this school. They come here to learn British methods, to see British medicine at its best, to observe and take part in the many fields of scientific research which have already made this school famous. It's a struggle in which the world is united, for it takes vast sums to train the researchers of tomorrow. But who knows what some of these students, here being lectured by Fleming's associate, Sir Howard Florey, may come up with. What is known is that to keep up the work of 25 researchers needs a cool million pounds. Then there's a new equipment, like this artificial lung, the money comes from charities like the Fleming Research Fund, some of whose members are arriving here for a meeting, from the government through the Medical Research Council, which last year budgeted more than four million pounds, and from the universities, always in the van of medical advance. The drug firms of Britain alone spend more than six million pounds a year on research. This assistant, in one of them, is trying a new penicillin. She gives a sample of blood to see that the penicillin has been absorbed properly into her bloodstream. For the man in the street, there's an easier way to help research. In the back rooms of medicine, other men follow their often lonely trails. Pioneers such as Nobel Prize winner, Professor Medawa, whose work on grafting could lead to a system of new human organs for old. Men like Professor Neuberger, head of the Wright Fleming Institute, where they're trying to find out just what happens when your child is immunized, and also what's behind our allergies such as hay fever. And here's someone, Dr. Poole of Oxford, who's invented a machine to reproduce human heartbeats to help him in his study of another big medical problem of our time, coronary thrombosis. In this same laboratory at Oxford, where much of the work on penicillin was done, Dr. Abraham uses this robot machine to get penicillin and chemicals into the pure form needed by the researchers. Back at the Wright Fleming Institute, they've been growing germs on these culture plates for testing. But that menacing midget of the germ world, the virus, which may only be a quarter of a millionth of an inch long, needs animal cells in which to grow. So the influenza virus is injected into hen's eggs. In this microscopic world too, are the specks of pollens that bring on hay fever. And they're collected in this rooftop trap every day of the year, to be checked under powerful magnifiers. From what they reveal, it's possible to tell which pollens will be in the air at any time and so protect their human victims. And here's a way of finding out whether a germ is harmless or dangerous. Each wire is dipped into a different virus and brought into contact with the germ under test. Some hospital germs that have resisted penicillin have been classified in this way. And now a stage further in anti-germ warfare. Here, men and women follow the trail blazed by Fleming in 1928. Here, they test still more penicillins against still more germs. Eighteen hours after the germs have been seeded, the plates are checked to see how the penicillin has acted. Clear zones mean success.
To keep up the long chain of experiments, the research teams must have plenty of moulds and germs to work on. So, there's a special department that grows them to order. Hundreds of moulds, hundreds of germs. Samples of any new germs discovered are nourished and kept alive. And here's how the mould of penicillin looks, just like the one Sir Alexander Fleming noticed. Today, countless people owe their lives to penicillin, and new penicillins are being found, each with its special germ-killing ability. This one firm alone has come up with around a thousand penicillins, and it's here that the discovery was made, which means that an almost endless variety of penicillins can be produced. At the National Institute for Medical Research in London, Dr. Alec Isaac's research team is grappling with that tiny enemy which no penicillin has yet beaten, the virus. And they found a substance which may lead to a drug to combat such viruses as flu and the common cold. And talking of colds, here's a gallant band who've come to this West Country hospital to do just that, catch a cold. First, they're checked to make sure they haven't got colds already. And now here it comes, a cold, straight from the test tube. Well, if you've had enough of the boss and the rush hour, you can always join the volunteers to do a few days solitary. Then with patience and plenty to read, you just sit back and hope you won't let the doctor down by keeping a clear head. Oh, the things we do for science. But don't worry, girls. You never had it so good when you had a cold at home. For every day, matrons on hand to see that your cold comes on nicely, to check your pulse and take your temperature. And the doctors around to collect those telltale handkerchiefs and to look at your nose and throat. It looks as if that little peril, the virus, is going to win this game. It's not so long ago that many another scourge menaced health. Today, the mass production of penicillin has vastly increased man's power to save life. Penicillins are being made by the ton to serve the world, tailor-made to fight particular diseases. In the urgent world of medicine, many a quiet war is being waged, often through the long night hours by solitary men and women. For here, as Sir Alexander Fleming once said, it's the lone worker who makes the first advance.